Hi, I'm Infernum, and this is my recap for the anime, Why Nobody Remembers My World. If you like my recaps, please subscribe. The story begins with a war breaking out between the five strongest races. Thanks to the hero of the humans, named Sid, the humans won the war, and the other four races were sealed in huge black pyramids, also known as tombs. The main character, Kai, is the guardian of one of these pyramids. However, a phenomenon of world rewriting unexpectedly occurs, and Kai finds himself in a world where hero Sid never existed, and humanity lost the war against the five races. In this world, humans are the ones sealed in the tombs, and demons and dragons rule the the world. Most importantly, in this world, neither Sid nor Kai are known or remembered. Kai stands before a girl with one white wing and one dark wing, who asks Kai to free her from her chains. Kai is surprised because, being non-human, she is asking him for help. Even though there was a war between humans and other races, he wonders why no one remembers the real world. Kai sets off with Saki and Ashurama to check the tomb he oversees once again. Saki says they need to watch the tomb for about 300 seconds, to which Ashurama complains that there's no need to take the job so seriously. Kai explains that demons, dragons, spirits, and otherworldly gods are sealed in the pyramid. In the Urzo Federation, Kai is responsible for monitoring the tombs. After 300 seconds pass, Kai confirms that the seal has not been broken and returns to the vehicle. Ashurama asked Kai if the seal had ever been broken in his lifetime. Kai replied that it never had. Ashurama questioned why they needed to take this so seriously, to which Kai responded that it wasn't just in Urzo. Everywhere, the tombs are monitored seriously. He added that if the demons ever escaped from the tomb, it would spell the end for humanity. On the training arena in Urzo, Kai and Ashurama are training against a mythic beast, a dragon. Ashurama had already given up, but Kai decided to fight the dragon seriously. The system warned Kai that this was dangerous. Kai attacked, but his strike was weak, and the dragon was about to attack Kai when Saki stopped the dragon just in time by turning off the hologram. Saki started to get angry at Kai for putting himself in danger, but Kai sat next to her and said that without risk, there's no point in such training. Saki looked at Kai and said that if he had been born during the Great War, he would have gone down in history. Kai replied, just like Prophet Sid, Saki looked at Sid's portrait and said she couldn't understand how Sid single-handedly defeated all the races, the hero of the demons, Vanessa, the hero of the otherworldly gods, Alfre, the hero of the spirits, Kyoka, and the hero of the mythic beasts, Rad E. Yet Prophet Sid defeated them all and gave humans a new life. Saki decided to approach Ashurama and poked him to get up. She then asked the guys how they were planning to congratulate Jean. Ashurama suggested, maybe we should give her a bouquet of flowers. Saki responded that Jean was being transferred to the main Urzo headquarters and that she was an elite. She would be showered with bouquets without their help. Suddenly, Jean messaged Kai, inviting him to meet her the next day at 9 a.m. near the cat statue. Kai said the message wasn't from Jean, to which Saki replied that Kai was trying to do something inappropriate with Jean, and Kai ran off for a jog. The next morning, Kai was waiting for Jean, who arrived and greeted him. Kai said he thought he'd be waiting another hour, but Jean frowned and called him rude, noticing he was fully geared. Kai explained that he had been training that morning and came as he was. Jean noticed a necklace and said she wanted to buy gifts for Saki and Ashurama, since it would be the last time she saw them. Kai reminded her that she was only being transferred for two years and would return but Jean said by that time, Saki and Ashurama would have completed their service and moved on to civilian life. Kai tried to cheer Jean up, telling her that she would definitely become stronger than her father. They spent the whole day choosing gifts and also had a delicious meal. After their outing, Jean thanked Kai for helping her and spending the day with her. She recalled the time when they were 10 and wandered into the tomb and how Kai saw Sid's sword there. Kai didn't tell anyone because no one believed him, so he kept quiet. The traffic light turned green, and Kai and Jean crossed the road together. Jean asked Kai what he thought about the future. Kai replied that Jean would return in two years, and then, Jean stopped him and asked what he thought about the distant future. Suddenly, everything began to fade in the Matrix, and Jean couldn't understand what was happening to Kai. This was happening only to him. Everything disappeared, and Kai found himself in an abandoned city. He noticed someone approaching from behind and saw a demon appearing. The demon started speaking in the human language and attacked Kai. Kai reacted in time, using his weapon and elf bullets to a race the demon's charms and stop its attack. The demon tried attacking from below, but Kai dodged and moved forward. He struck the demon with his weapon, fired at it, 
and defeated it. Kai was surprised that he managed to defeat the demon. Suddenly, another demon appeared behind him, who began speaking to him in the human language. Kai commented on how well the demon spoke human language. The demon replied that it was easier to command slaves in their language. Kai didn't understand what slaves the demon was referring to. Just as the demon was about to attack Kai again, Saki and Ashurama appeared and saved him. Kai saw Saki and called her by name, but Saki didn't remember Kai and didn't understand how he knew her name. Kai decided to talk to Ashurama, who also didn't remember him. Kai sat back and began to tell them that they served together in the Humanity Defense Unit. Saki corrected him, saying they were resistance fighters. Kai apologized and asked them to explain what was happening in the world. Ashurama explained that there had been a war and humans had lost. As a result, the four races took control of all the cities and lands. Kai was shocked, unable to comprehend what had happened to humanity. Saki explained that they were running and hiding. They arrived at the metro, where Ashurama explained that demons now ruled the world, forcing humans to flee and hide in places like the human city, Neo Neonashal. They had repurposed underground structures to create the city, where all the resistance fighters were now based, fighting for peace. Kai paused and asked why humans had lost the war. Saki pointed out that Kai had seen a demon. Now imagine hundreds attacking you. She added that each race had powerful heroes. Kai suddenly remembered Sid and asked about Hero Sid, but no one knew him. Kai insisted that Prophet Sid had defeated the other races, but Ashurama countered that if they had such a person, they wouldn't be living underground. Just then, the main army returned, and Ashurama explained that there were several such cities like theirs. Kai saw Mr. Jean commanding the main army and remembered Jean, wondering why everyone referred to her as Mr. Jean approached Saki and Ashurama, thanking them for their service. As Jean passed by Kai, Kai turned and shouted to Jean that they had recently gone shopping together. Confused, Jean turned and said he didn't understand what Kai was talking about. Kai was upset that he wasn't remembered. Jean started to leave, but Kai decided not to stay silent and yelled after her, accusing her of pretending to be a guy. Jean's assistant stopped Kai, but Jean asked them to let Kai go, and they left. That evening, Kai thought about everything that had happened. If there was no hero of humans like Sid, then why were there tombs where other beings were sealed? The next morning, Kai decided to ask about the tombs, but neither Saki nor Ashurama knew anything about them. Kai asked Ashurama for a car, and Ashurama handed him the keys, surprising both Saki and Ashurama themselves. Ashurama said he did it automatically. Kai drove through the city, realizing that demons were now ruling the cities. He arrived at the pyramid and noticed that the seal of the pyramid had been broken. Entering inside, he saw light emanating from a glowing sword. Kai rushed to it and took it. It was Sid's hero sword. Suddenly, the sword activated, opening a space, and Kai disappeared, entering another dimension where he saw a girl sealed to a pillar. One wing of hers was white and the other black. She begged Kai to remove the seal and save her, unsure if she was a demon or an angel. She asks him for help. Kai looks at her and cannot determine her race. The girl asks who she is and tells him her name, Rini, and requests his assistance. Kai approaches her and realizes she is not a demon and tries to help. He circles around her and strikes the seal, but cannot remove it. Even shooting at it proves ineffective, and he cannot understand why he cannot break the seal. He then thinks of the sword City, which might help him break the seal. He activates it, and it begins to shine again. Kai strikes with the sword, managing to cut through both the space and the seal. He manages to catch the girl just in time to prevent her from falling and asks her how she is. She immediately stands up, shouting Vanessa and declaring that she has not yet given up. She looks at Kai and says that he is a minor demon and begins attacking him repeatedly. Kai cannot dodge her next attack and deflects it with his sword, which can cut through the very essence of understanding. The girl sees this and asks how such a pitiful human did it. Kai replies that he is not a demon but a human and that he is not her enemy. The girl says that she does not like demons, which is why she reacted this way. Kai asks what race she is, but the girl says it doesn't matter and thanks Kai for saving her. Kai responds that it is fine and mentions that he is not used to being called a human, preferring to be called Kai. Kai then asks what this place is. Rini says she doesn't know, she was fighting the dark hero Vanessa. Later, she ended up here. Kai asked if, since she fought Vanessa, she must be strong. She replied that, of course, she is strong, but Kai is not weak either, since he managed to cut through her magic. Suddenly, a creature appeared behind the girl, intending to destroy Kai because he was using an unfamiliar object for this world. Kai grabbed Rini's hand and told her they needed to run, but the monster used its power to try to remove Rini from this world. Kai couldn't bear to watch Rini pleading not to do it. Using the sword city, he managed to stop the removal, 
cut down the monster and grab Rinny. The monster was baffled as to why the Forbidden Blade was in this world. Kai and Rinny escaped from that place, and Rinny immediately hugged Kai, saying she was very scared. Kai understood and hugged her back, asking if she had any friends. Rinne said she had never had any. This was the first time someone had hugged her. Throughout her life, different races had called her an outsider, but demons were the worst, which is why she fought Vanessa. Kai shared that he felt the same way. No one remembers him, and he is completely alone. In his familiar story, people won, but in this world, demons prevailed. Rinne said she had never heard that demons had conquered the world, as long before her battle with Vanessa, people had been defeating demons thanks to the emergence of a hero. Kai couldn't hold back and immediately asked about City, but Rinne said she didn't know anyone by that name. Kai said that Rinne was now his friend, and Rinne was delighted, saying that now they were together. They left the pyramid, and Rinne collapsed. Kai picked her up and said that since she had nowhere to go, she could come with him to the city. Rinne said she didn't want to go to the city because there were people there, and she didn't trust anyone. However, Kai reassured her, saying that if she trusted him, everything would be fine and he wouldn't let her down. Returning to his room, Kai mentioned how exhausted he was, recalling everything Rinne had been through from the car ride to almost using magic in the city. Kai looked at his sword and noticed it had returned to its ordinary state. He wanted to activate his sword, but suddenly Rinny ran out, causing Kai to blush and tell her she should wrap the towel properly since everything was visible. Rinny told Kai that they were lucky to bathe in such warm water and that the beds were as soft as feathers, contrasting with her previous experience of bathing in cold water and rivers. Rinna confirmed that there were indeed demons above, and Kai realized that after meeting Rinna, the story had turned upside down. They were now in a different story, where demons had prevailed, while in the true story, humans had defeated all races. Rinna suggested that they needed to return to the true story, and Kai agreed that they had a way to do so. Suddenly, Rin woke Kai and said she sensed that demons were approaching them. Demons then invaded their bunker. Kai stood with Rin, understanding that people lived under oppression. He said he needed to go since only he could repeat City's story in this world. Saki and Ashuran were trying to fend off the demons, but were struggling, and Ashuran sent Saki for the machine gun. She ran, but suddenly a demon appeared, intending to attack Saki from behind. Not knowing what to do, Saki was saved by Kai, who intervened and protected her from the demon. Kai asked Saki to douse the demons with water, as this would prevent them from flying upward. Ashuran was also attacked by a demon, but Kai managed to shield him in time. Using combat techniques, Kai fought the demons, and Rinna decided to help by attacking the demon with her magic. Kai praised her, and Rinna said that if Kai was fighting, she would fight too. Saki and Ashuran ran to Kai, asking how he managed to defeat the demons and what kind of ammunition he was using. Kai explained that he came from another world where humans had defeated other races and that he was using ammunition from that world. Saki and Ashuran did not understand him, thinking he was joking. Saki suggested that Kai should go to Jean's headquarters, as they needed strong warriors like him. Kai agreed to go to the headquarters, and as they traveled there, Saki explained that Jean had become the commander after his father's death. They arrived at the headquarters, and Kai introduced himself and Rinne, saying he had come from another world where humans had defeated demons. However, everyone began to oppose Kai, as no one believed his story. But Jean intervened and said that Kai had mentioned their relationship earlier and asked what their relationship was in Kai's world. Kai said they were childhood friends and that Jean wanted to be like Oak and Jen. Jean heard these names and said that was enough for today. Kai and Rinna then sat in a room together. However, a subordinate of Jean arrived and said that Jean was calling for them. On the way to Jean, Kai asked if Jean believed his words. Kai entered the room and saw Jean, realizing that Jean had been pretending to be a boy all this time, a secret known only to close acquaintances. Jean said that while Kai knew the names of her father and grandfather, it did not mean she would trust him completely. However, she could trust Kai to some extent, and Jean began to explain their plan. They needed to crush the demons that had attacked their previous stronghold. Jean said that Kai would receive a worthy reward, and Rinna commented that there would be no end to the fighting, as other demons would follow. Jean acknowledged this, but stated that there was no other choice. Kai said they needed to attack the demons themselves, specifically the Dark Empress Vanessa. Jean asked if Kai had lost his mind, as Vanessa was a complete disaster who had single-handedly destroyed human strongholds. Kai thought that now he had the weapon of the legendary hero City. Kai said they would fight alongside Rinny, as in his story, the legendary hero City had defeated Vanessa. Jean asked why he was risking his life so much. Kai replied that he was not from this story and could simply choose to do nothing. 
but he saw how Saki and Ashuron were fighting, and he couldn't bear to leave them to die here while watching from his world. Kai said that demons were not afraid of humans, but of other races, and he devised a new plan to destroy the demons. He explained that most of their forces were at the border, with only a small portion in the capital. While Rini and Kai would fight Vanessa, they would need to find a way to reach the city center. Falil then revealed that there was an underground route beneath the city, which would make it easy to get around. She also mentioned that this plan had been devised by Jean's father. Jean asked why Falil had kept this information hidden. Falil explained that there had been no one capable of defeating Vanessa at the time, so the plan had not succeeded. Jean asked why she hadn't told her, to which Kai replied that it was because she was Jean's daughter and no father would want to endanger his child. Jean understood and agreed with Falil. Jean called Falil a fool, but everyone agreed to fight. Jean said they needed to convene a military council and could not delay, as other cities would also be attacked. They needed to reclaim the Urza Federation from Vanessa's control. Rinna explains that she dislikes demons for their treachery, spirits for their creepiness, mythical beasts for their savagery, and otherworldly gods for their stubbornness, and she doesn't like humans because of their weakness. Rinna has a mix of all these races within her, which is why she loves herself the most. But when she looked at Kai, she remembered that he accepted her as she is and didn't push her away. Rinna doesn't want Kai to die and leave her alone. They traveled through an underground tunnel to storm the Demon Palace. Saki mentioned that the plan was perfect, but she was unhappy that they were the ones going to fight Vanessa. Saki was scared because Vanessa was so strong and she was very afraid. Kai said he could only trust Saki and Asherin. Rinna supported Saki and said she was Kai's friend and would do everything to help them, and she wouldn't lose to anyone except Vanessa. Saki asked if Rinna could handle Vanessa, to which Rinna replied that she couldn't. Saki started crying, and Rinna said she would blow herself up along with Vanessa. Saki hugged her and said, don't. Kai noticed that Asheron was very calm, but Asheron said that wasn't true because his hands were shaking while they were traveling. However, he was happy because if they didn't put an end to this, it would continue forever, and if they could defeat the demons, it would be worth it. Commander Jean greeted everyone and motivated each person standing before him, saying that motivation is the most important thing needed. They ran forward, and Kai noticed the government palace and was surprised. Demons stood in their way, and Kai decided to deal with one of them. He saw that the demon was using powers he had already shown Kai, and Kai destroyed him. Then he saw demons gathering above. He used a bullet from his world and destroyed all the demons at once, surprising everyone. Jean approached, and Kai showed him where they needed to go. Jean divided the people into groups and ordered the first and second groups to guard the palace entrance. The third group, along with Kai's squad and Jean, headed to the upper floor. Rinna noticed an imp and said it wanted to summon a large demon. The demon grabbed one of the people, but Fallon quickly reacted and saved her comrade. Fallon told them to go upstairs while she handled things here. Jean and the squad moved forward when they were suddenly attacked by lightning. Kai began to worry about Jean, but Jean was unharmed and said he was wearing an elven cloak so the demon couldn't harm him. Jean ordered them to go on while they dealt with things there. Kai's squad continued, and suddenly, a huge demon appeared before them. Saki was scared and wanted to shoot, but Rinna stopped her and told her to be quiet. Kai used a barrier, and they remained unnoticed, so the demon left. Saki said she had never been so scared. They reached the floor where the palace's electricity was stored. Kai said he would give a signal when they needed to cut the power. Ashuran asked them not to take unnecessary risks. Kai and Rinna ran forward, but suddenly noticed that an alarm had started. Kai thought they had been spotted and rushed ahead, where they encountered a demon responsible for all the surveillance equipment. The demon revealed that Vanessa had known the humans were there for a long time and wanted to know why they had started such an offensive after so many years. The demon decided to attack Kai, but Rinna quickly saved him, pushing the demon back. She blocked Kai's path and told him to go on. Rinna said she would handle the demon herself and then catch up with him. Kai trusted Rinna and ran toward Vanessa. Meanwhile, Rinna declared that she wanted to be with Kai and would do everything to destroy anyone who stood in her way. Kai reached Vanessa's throne and faced her. At the same time, Jean and his squad were struggling with the demons but couldn't inflict any damage. The demon decided to counterattack Jean but couldn't harm him. Jean removed his cloak 
transformed it into a bow, and shot the demon, ultimately destroying it. Just as Jean finished off the demon, a Cerberus appeared behind him, but Fallen, having dealt with her demon, intervened to help Jean. Vanessa spoke with Kai, asking him to drop his weapon and surrender, saying that she, a succubus, could help him relax. Kai refused, saying he came from a world where Vanessa had been defeated. Vanessa retorted that this couldn't be possible and asked who had defeated her. Kai replied that it was humans who defeated her. Vanessa asked for the name of the person who had defeated her, and Kai answered that it was Sid. Vanessa immediately changed, recalling all the moments associated with Sid. She rose from her throne and decided to destroy Kai. Vanessa attacked, but Kai quickly used his weapon to dispel her charms. Vanessa was surprised, but Kai immediately attacked her, dealing damage. However, it turned out to be a mirage. Vanessa had used a succubus illusion and attacked Kai, but he dodged. Vanessa noted that Kai was a worthy opponent and decided to use her full power. She accidentally destroyed part of the fortress and asked what Kai would do next. Vanessa then decided not to hold back and completely destroyed her palace with her magic. Rinna, having already defeated her demon, began to worry about Kai. Everyone heard the sounds coming from the upper floors and understood that Kai was fighting Vanessa. As Vanessa destroyed her palace, she asked why Kai was still alive, saying that no human could survive such attacks unless he was a hero of one of the races. She looked at Kai standing near her. Kai thought again that Sid's sword had saved him, but then Rinna suddenly appeared, worried about Kai, and said she would help him. Kai noticed the wounds on Rinna's body and said she was badly hurt. Rinna told Vanessa to stop, but Vanessa asked who she was. Suddenly, a portal opened behind Vanessa and grabbed her. It was the system that had captured Vanessa and intended to erase her hero code from this world. Vanessa managed to escape from the system's nets and destroyed it before the coding was completed. The system wasn't destroyed but was damaged beyond acceptable levels and simply retreated. Kai saw Vanessa's power level and asked how Rinna had fought her before. Rinna replied that Vanessa wasn't this strong then. Her power level is much higher now. Vanessa noticed that her wounds were healing differently, but decided to ignore it since she had more important things to do. Destroy Kai. Vanessa descended to the ground to Kai, and Rinna attacked first, capturing Vanessa and using a dark prison. Rinna began shouting at Kai to run while she held Vanessa. Vanessa realized it was a spirit barrier, but this childish barrier couldn't hold her. She broke the barrier and was about to finish off Rinna, but Kai intervened and attacked Vanessa. Vanessa used her power and blasted Kai away. He flew into the wall, lost consciousness, and was covered in blood. Rinna started crying and screaming, thinking Kai was dead. Vanessa said that Kai was dead and taunted Rinna, asking what she would do now. Rinna stood up and healed her wounds with dark energy, vowing that Vanessa would pay for hurting Kai. Rinna used her true power and attacked Vanessa, landing blow after blow. Vanessa managed to defend herself and began laughing. Vanessa remarked that if Rinna had fought in this form from the start, Kai wouldn't have been hurt. Vanessa's words stung Rinna, who had been afraid to show her true form, fearing that Kai would call her a monster. Rinna admitted it was true, but said it no longer mattered. Rinna began using a forbidden curse, and Vanessa started bleeding as the curse took hold, intending to kill them both. However, Rinna fell to her knees, realizing her curse had been canceled. Vanessa revealed she had anticipated this and had canceled Rinna's curse with her own. Vanessa called Rinna a pathetic creature. Rinna began begging Kai for forgiveness. Vanessa decided to finish off Rinna with one final blow, but suddenly Kai saved Rinna and asked her why she was apologizing. Rinna couldn't understand how Kai was still alive. Kai thanked her and said that because Rinna had bought time, he could now fight. Vanessa couldn't comprehend how a human could survive her attack. Kai challenged Vanessa, and she lost her composure, unable to believe that a human could survive her strikes. Kai declared that for Rinna's sake, he would destroy Vanessa, as Rinna had fought for her life. Vanessa acknowledged the strength of all demon, dragon, beast, and spirit tribes, admiring their hero's incredible power, but she refused to acknowledge Kai, stating that humans had no heroes. Kai replied that he had the will, and in this battle, he represented humanity. Vanessa said she couldn't imagine a pathetic human accomplishing anything and used great magic, but Kai countered with a key guardian, nullifying her magic. Vanessa decided to use enchantments, but Kai gave a signal, and Ashuran turned off the lights in the building. Vanessa thought she could easily see in the dark and used her vision to notice Kai's sword coming at her. But it wasn't Kai, it was Rinna. While Kai had positioned himself behind Vanessa, having prepared for this moment all along, Rinna threw her sword to Kai and Kai delivered the final blow. Vanessa admitted her defeat and said she would surrender the city to Kai, who then destroyed Vanessa. After the battle, 
Something strange happened. Vanessa began talking about Sid and mentioned that the world had been rewritten, and it was neither Vanessa nor Sid who did it. Vanessa explained that Sid had already known this would happen, that someone would remake the world. He had given his sword to Vanessa to hide and protect it, knowing that Kai would use it to alter the rewriting of the world. Kai began asking why Sid had given his sword to Vanessa when they had been enemies all their lives. Vanessa explained that this was an unknown past where Sid and Vanessa were not enemies, a zero coding, the worst curse. Vanessa spoke of Sid's bravery in giving up his powerful weapon, calling it human character. Vanessa began to fade away, expressing regret over her defeat and warning Kai that next time she would meet him as a succubus and they would have some fun. Then Vanessa disappeared. Kai collapsed to the ground and Rinna supported him, telling him that he had defeated Vanessa and everything was fine. Rumors spread worldwide that the resistance under Jean's command had reclaimed Urza and defeated the demon hero. The next day, everyone was resting and recuperating. Kai and Rinna sat atop a tower, and now Kai needed to figure something out. He had previously thought it was Kai who had gone through the change, but he wondered if by delving into Vanessa's words, it was actually Kai and Rinna who had avoided the change. Just then, Jean approached them and thanked them for making such a huge step for humanity. Jean noticed that Kai did not have the look of a victor, but Kai reassured her that everything was fine. Jean then informed them that she would not be overseeing the city's restoration. She would give this task to those who knew better than her. Jean explained that there were three federations that had taken from humans, and everywhere the enemies were either otherworldly gods or spirits. Jean wanted to help humans reclaim their cities and asked Kai to join them. She vowed to become the best commander to finally end the war of the Great Five Tribes. Kai agreed, but was very surprised by her seriousness since the old Jean had been more childish and carefree. Kai described how Jean used to be, and Jean said she couldn't believe she had been like that. Kai looked at Rinna and said that he had wanted to ask Jean for help in fighting the other races. He shook Jean's hand and said he agreed, and Jean accepted. They then descended, and Jean began talking to her troops while Kai and Rinna observed from the side. Kai told Rinna that he would definitely end the War of the Five Tribes. If Sid was not in this world, then Kai would do it. He also promised to find the source of the metamorphosis and restore the true world. Rinna looked at Kai and noticed an unknown aspect in him, a divine presence, most likely the form of Sid that she saw in him. 